Hi, um, I'm calling from the post office. My name is Roy. Yes. And uh, the new ma- our mailman. I don't know if you know this, but he's very OCD. Uh, no. Oh yeah, and um, he's been complaining about your mailbox because it is not perfectly level. Do you think you can have someone rehang your mailbox so that it's not leaning? Um, you know, I will, but I mean that's that has nothing to do with me. It's um, the um, uh, the um, spit it out, Remington Woods. Uh, so you know the they own they they install them. So I mean, I will bring it to their attention. Well, you could just go over but, there and fix it without telling them. You know, I don't see where my mailbox is leaning. It's it's You're, it's just a slightly off. He measured it. He brought a, a one of those carpenters levels and, and made sure. And he says it's 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 uh, just a little bit off. The bubble's just a little bit to the left. Oh my god! <laughs> you know. I mean, I have a woman. What? I have a woman. Uh, you have a that woman. delivers my mail. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, I know she looks like a woman, but she's actually a man. She, she's one of those oh. tra- transgenders. Okay, all right. You know, to each his own. But um, you know, because the original male lady, which. I assumed was a lady was going. On you know what? You know what? Male, male lady, in. male lady. That is that is so appropriate in this case because it's a transgender. Uh huh. I just needed to point that out. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, we had, which I, you know, was a male lady to begin with, and then but she um, said well, she was going on vacation, and that someone else was taking her position. So therefore, um, Whoa, wait. that's who I assumed oh. was. Oh, is it April? Um, you know, I don't know what her name is. Okay. I, I, don't. <laughs> I just remember but from okay, la- last we week's show, uh, April was retiring. Okay. Well, okay. Well, good luck to her. And, and slash uh, we him. We shall um, take care of the mailbox. All right. Yeah. Fix that up. Do it by tonight. Alrighty. Hurry up. Mm-hmm. Just, just Bye-bye. hurry the fuck up with that. Man. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Cactus, 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 cactus. Hello, everybody. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. This is episode 616. Today is February 19th, 2020. And this show is brought to you by our sponsors, Jim Dusky, A.K. Frost, Gobi, Christine, and Todd L. They're the ones keeping the lights on around here while I do the shows and stuff. Thanks, all of you, for supporting the show. Also, thank you to the new people who've signed up over the past week or so, like Corn Growers Emporium and Distillery, Brad K., Jarrett C., Marco K., Crypta Podcast, Chris C., and Fish Boy is Gay. But that's all right, because, you know, it's 2020. Nothing wrong with that. That's a good name you picked. People who support the show for $5 a month or more, they get to hear the hobo sods, like the one that I did two days ago on Monday. It was called Bob the Builder, and this happened in that one. Excuse me. My name is Brandy. I'm an attorney. I'm the daughter of Loretta. I need wow. your name. I already told uh, Loretta my name is Bob. Bob? Bob. Yeah. Bob. I'm sorry. Do you have a last name? Bob yeah, of course. Of course. What did she just say? Um, I need to know your last name, Bob. No, 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 I'm, no, 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 no. I think McKenna or whatever the fuck her dumb name is just made an insult about the name Bob. What, what the okay. fuck did she say? I'm. What company are you with? I'm with the trash company. Look, what, I, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Even, we're not even going to charge her to, for breaking it. I just wanted an apology because she's like trying to claim that we broke it when she broke it. I know Loretta broke it. Okay. Well, stop. Stop. You're not making anything better. Stop. Yeah, shut the fuck up, McKenna. That lady really gave me a good lawyering on Monday's hobo episode, so be sure to listen to that. Patreon.com slash phone losers. I have a couple of important things here. Thing number one, me and Giad, we want to know what's the best app to record cell phone calls with. On an Android, 
I don't know what he needs it for. I know I just need it for stuff in general. You know, when I'm sitting out on park benches recording prank calls and stuff, that would be kind of nice to have. And there was one I used. I can't even think of the name of it right now. I think it was called Cube or something. And it worked okay. It didn't bother me too much. It didn't have a bunch of pop-ups or anything. But it wouldn't let me record to the SD card, and that sucked. And it seems like most of the programs for Android, they want to charge you money for them. And I'd be okay with like a small app fee, but I'm not going to pay like a monthly fee. And I think GAD's pretty much the same way so if you know of a really good cell phone recording app out there for android let me know in the comments of wherever you're watching this on i know somebody recommended something a long time ago to me but i didn't write it down this time i will though i promise and as long as we're talking about advice from listeners on things that I should use, you know, I was complaining about 411.com being all out of date and stuff. I got this email from Devin B. Not the prank call show Devin. It's a different Devin. I think anyway. It says, hey, Brad, for your at and calls, changing people's numbers, here's a way to look up the carriers that is accurate. And it's called freecarrierlookup.com. So thank you for that, Devin. I've used it a couple of times. I haven't confirmed that it's awesome yet, but at least it's a less annoying website than 411.com for a few different reasons. So I will definitely be using that from now on, and I will let you know if it's awful. Freecarrierlookup.com. Everybody bookmark that. I got an email from Jared. He says, well, you won the grandma challenge. Thanks, Brad. You pranked my unprankable grandma, and it's very weird that the other one didn't fall for it. I think that's the one where she was at bingo, and I talked to her forever and i called her at the bingo hall and then i talked to his other grandma and she i think she yelled at me or something because she didn't believe that i was him so that was a lot of fun thank you jared for giving me an update and sending me your grandma's number i've gotten some other grandma numbers waiting in my email i just need to give them a call i'm not going to do that on today's show i mean unless the stuff that i have planned just doesn't work out at all uh just a couple more things here i was on devin's show one week ago today back on wednesday the 12th of february we did quite a few calls together they were a lot of fun and then she also did a show on friday i think she did one on thursday too like they did three in a row her and daisy did and i may have been on all of them i was definitely on wednesday's show and on friday's show so go back in the archives and listen to those i will have links to those in the show notes if you want to listen to me on devin's show friday might have been a daisy show i can't remember i'll find the links to them hopefully they're up and those will be in the show notes on snowplowshow.com the only thing i really remember about those shows is that i was on more near the end than the beginning so just skip past all the stuff with just Devin and Daisy in it and go toward the end where I'm there I know on one of those you can hear me sing almost the entire song of what's up by four non blondes but with a voice changer and also I was on the dick show this past week we recorded it on Sunday it just came out on Tuesday yesterday and that was a lot of fun he played one of my prank calls that you've already heard I think that was in the last episode of the snowplow show I think was that Friday I can't remember the one about Maddox being a podcaster and knocking out a wall and the lady got all pissy with me. That was played on the Dick Show. It's kind of fun to hear it with a laugh track in the background. You know, Dick and Sean laughing over it. And then they also played one of my old Walmart calls, the one with the uh, the girl that needs her medication and she keeps getting the wrong department and yelling at me and threatening to blow up the store and everything. I will have a link to that also in the show notes. Or if you want to go directly to it, it's thedickshow.com which is one of those shows that I listen to all the time. My two main shows are The Dick Show and Distorted View. It's good stuff. Everybody should listen to it. I did another call for Dick this week, which I'm not going to play on this show because it doesn't really relate to this show, but I'm kind of hoping he plays that next week. Let's see, what else? Uh, Shout out to MC Lars and Schaefer the Dark Lord. They told me today on a live stream, they've been live streaming from their car as they tour the country, performing at shows. They said 80% of the stuff they listen to while on the road is phone losers lately, which is pretty amazing. They are touring with the Double Clicks this week or this month or whatever. Tonight, they're in Minneapolis playing songs with the Double Clicks. Remember the Double Clicks? I used to play that song all the time, Technical Writer in the background and everybody always complained about it and i'm like fuck you everybody i love this song i'm gonna play it forever but i don't play it much anymore you know what i'm gonna change the music to that right now there we go that's better it's very soothing i'm gonna play that for the rest of today's show but they're touring with the double clicks everyone should go see their shows if you are near where they are playing nerdcoretour.com be sure to ask the double clicks to play technical writer they love that that doesn't annoy them at all Uh, I have other things in here, um, but I think I'm just going to save it for the next show because this intro has gone on for way too long. So let's do some calls. 
Hello, Alan? No. Oh, Mrs. Yes. Okay. Hi, it's Steve Dave. I'm with the post office. Yes. I'm calling to let you know you're going to have a new uh, mail carrier on Monday. Oh, okay. Um, but he's uh, disabled, and we noticed you don't have a wheelchair ramp yet going up to no, your house. Our, our mailbox is out on the street. Yeah, but he might need to bring a package up. And? So you need to get a wheelchair ramp on your house. I don't think so. Oh, yes, you do. It's, uh, it's the Disabilities Act of 2002. You're going to need to... Well, nobody on our street has a wheelchair ramp. Well, they're all going to get a wheelchair ramp because you now have a postman who's disabled. Well, we'll have to watch for the postman and come out and get the package, or he can let it no, by the mailbox. No, no, he I'm should sorry, be... I'm sorry, sir. I do not think you ma'am. are legitimate at all. Why do you think I'm not legitimate? Well, that was rude. So, you remember the good old days when I used to call up people and tell them I was the post office, and they are required to get wheelchair ramps on their homes for the disabled postman? Those were fun calls, weren't they? I think today I'm going to relive the glory days of telling people they have to get wheelchair ramps on their houses, because otherwise it's a violation of the Disabilities Act of 2002. And I'm calling off of a list that Frankie sent me, so thank you, Frankie, for these numbers. Hi, this is Lisa. Oh, hi, Lisa. Yes. It's Steve Day from the post office. Oh, wait. Oh, from the post office. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, I, I, they wanted me to just call up everyone in your neighborhood and let you know you're going to be getting a new mail carrier on, okay. on Monday. Okay. I don't even know our mail carrier, unfortunately. Oh. Well, <laughs> wow. Okay. Because I work, so most of us work. So. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, yeah. this particular mail carrier, he's uh, disabled, so he's in a wheelchair. You're gonna, okay. You're going to need to get a wheelchair ramp on the front of your house. Oh, okay. This is real funny. <laughs> oh no, I'm not. Um, I'm not being funny, ma'am. Okay. Um. Well, my. I, I'm just. I, I. I'm thinking this is. This is. Wait, a wheelchair ramp on the front of my house. Yeah, just a wheelchair ramp for disabled people. It's a part of the Disabilities Act of 2002. No, I understand that's part of the Disabilities Act, but but he would probably be driving a car, uh, like his car, and just pulling up to the mailbox and um, putting the mail in there without getting out. But sometimes he needs to bring a package up. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to walk to where my husband is. Where's that? You went home. Okay. All right. You know, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, um, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna have to either give you a call back or something because I don't want to be rude and hang up, but mm-hmm. I just, I feel like everybody in the neighborhood is going to have to build a wheelchair ramp up it's to true. their house. Correct. Yes. Yeah. For the okay. for the disa- disabled postman. That's all. It's not a big. De- it's oh. the Disabilities Act of two thousand two. All businesses and oh. homes have to have a wheelchair ramp. Oh. Okay. Well, and let me talk to my husband about it because um, yeah, my church actually builds these for people. But um, but anyway, tell me your name again. You're going to talk to your husband about whether or not you need to comply with the Disabilities Act. No. 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 I'm just. I just. I just. Um, I. I just. Okay, well, I appreciate you calling me, but I'm probably going to talk to my neighbors and see if they got the same phone call as this. So, okay. Um, I mean, you right, can call me back right. at the post office if you think I'm lying to you. Oh, I don't think you're lying. I'm not saying that. I just this has just sounds been like really. You do. It sounds like you also you hate you hate disabled people. <laughs> like you don't oh, even want to put a. Sake. Okay. Well, you know, um, actually, my husband, I think, went to the post office today, so I'll just have him confirm that with our with our local post office. I think, didn't Dad just go to the post office? That yeah, well, tell did. him to have good luck there, because the counter's not even open. We closed at 4. Oh, okay. They closed at 4? I don't think they closed at 4. Well, I think we do. Oh, there, there you go. Call me a liar again. I see. Oh, uh, well, I'm... I'm sorry. Well, well, thank you for your call, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. I think you're a liar, too. Bye. Well, this isn't working out, because I just looked at her address, and they do have the mailboxes out by the street in front of every single house. But this list that I'm calling from, it is a massive list of phone numbers in all kinds of different neighborhoods. So I'm just going to need to move to a different neighborhood, I guess. But until I move areas, let's just try some different types of calls. 
Hello. Hi, is this Tony? Uh, this is uh, his wife, Peggy. Oh, okay. Hey, Peggy. Uh, this is Steve Day from the post office. Yes. I was just calling to let you know we're going to be um, changing the location of your mailbox and a lot, oh. of, a lot of the mailboxes in, in your neighborhood uh, starting yeah. on Monday morning. Um, they're going to be moving pretty much all of the mailboxes from your street directly yeah. in front of your house. In front of our house? Yeah, there's going to be about 120 of them. Oh, my gosh. We don't like that. Well, why not? Well, it's going to be right in front of our house. Yeah, like yeah, all it's going to be mailboxes. It's going to be a, a just a really long row of them. It's going to go pretty much from one end of the property line of your property line to the other. So it's going to block our our house. Well, it's, I really don't. It's not. We gonna, really don't like that. It's not going to be in in your lawn. It's going to be like on that little yeah, I know, miniature but lawn. I know, but it's going to take away from the curb appeal of our house. Yeah, well, they're they're going to be nice looking mailboxes. They're going to be silver. Silver. Yeah, I've seen those before, and they end up not being so nice. Well, no, they, they're, they're um, stainless steel. They're, they're, they're not, not gonna, happy with this. They're not going to rust or anything. And also, like that whole grass patch in front of your house, yeah, uh, you won't have to mow it anymore because from one end all the way Hold to the on other. Hold a minute. Let me tell my husband because I don't know if we can contest this or not, but, uh, from, but from, it does not sound from good. From one driveway to the other. Uh, we already called the neighbor to the right of you, and they didn't complain. Yeah, because it's in front of our house. Well, no, it's going to be in front of both of your houses, from one driveway to the other. Just a big silver wall of mailboxes. It's to make things... The, so, yeah, I know what it is. to make it more convenient for you guys. Yeah, well, it's convenient it's for you, gonna too. it's going to be... Um, I, not I, really. I think you'd be the I'm happiest. very convenient as it is. Uh, hold on. I would think you'd be the happiest. Every mailbox on this street right in front of our house. One of those big silver things. You know, like they have at Mom and Dad. Yeah. Who, the post office? Yes, the post office. Well, why not put it down by the power? Why not get, put it down between the houses where the power lines are? Well, they just decided this was the best place. You know, it's centrally, well, centrally it's not located. the best place for us. It's going to take away from the curb appeal of our house. It actually is the, yeah. it's the, it's better for you than anyone else because it's right in front of your house. You don't have to walk don't, down the We block. don't care. Ours Ours is, I don't care. It's its the way it's going to look. And you won't have to it, do any upkeep I, I, on I, your mailbox? Because we noticed, you know, you have that mailbox out there. And it looks kind of hobo-y. No, it looks just fine. And it, well, we replaced a mailbox two years ago. And Yeah, um, but you replaced it with kind of like a cheap cheap style. Like it looks. You know what? I, I know what you're talking about. Those silver mailboxes that you have to have to open a key and people drop their mail and leave it in, down there and then we'll have to pick it up. And besides that, it's going to take away from the appeal of our house. Well, your house isn't that nice. Like I, I've got a... Excuse me? Excuse me? Well, I'm, what did I'm, you say? I mean, it's covered by... Can I speak to your, can I speak to your supervisor, Ma'am, please? I don't mean anything by that. I just mean it's covered yes, by do. trees. We don't have any trees. We have trees in, way in front of our house, but not on the, not where you're talking about. Yeah, but like, you know, when they're all in bloom and everything, you can't really see too much of your house. Yes, you can. You, I don't know uh, what you're talking about, but maybe you have the wrong house. But um, our, our lawn is very well kept. Very well. I, in fact, a lot of people say our lawn is the best in the neighborhood. Oh, people just say that to be nice. Let me, but, can I speak to your supervisor, please? Sure, I can put her on. I don't, I don't see why you yes. need to be like this about it. Um, but, well, you're being really ugly. No, I'm not being ugly, ma'am. Our, our house doesn't look very nice anyway. I Let me speak to your supervisor. I didn't supervisor. mean it like yes. that. You're, you're, ta well, you, you're taking it the wrong way. Well, you've said several things that, um, well, you called me ugly. that were very offensive. No, I didn't call you ugly. I said what you said was ugly. I would like to speak to your supervisor, please. Okay, yeah. Well, I think your house is ugly. Just a minute. Let me get Carol. Oh, my God. He said, I think your house is ugly. Hello, this is Carol. Can I help you? Carol, are you a supervisor with the postal office? Yes, I am. I don't know who I was just speaking to, but he was downright rude and ugly. Oh. He's telling us that you guys are going to relocate all the mailboxes on our street right in front of our house, which, first of all, we have a real problem with. Ma'am, I, I know that, that that was Steve Dave, and I, I know he's not good looking, you know what he per told se, me? but he shouldn't. Uh, excuse me. I didn't. <laughs> 
what I said was, he, he told me that our house doesn't, first he said, your house doesn't look very good anyway. And then when I questioned him on that, he said, your house is ugly. Oh, no, and what I, I said, what I said was, you are being ugly. I didn't say he didn't look, he looked ugly. I said, you are acting ugly. To say that to a customer, well, between, your house isn't there. Between your house you. isn't very good looking anyway, and, you, and your house is ugly, and, um, he's, like, and you, you can't, you your yard doesn't ugly. look very good. Our yard is the best in the neighbor, in the street, and you can ask any of our neighbors, it is. Okay, well, you, and he you, said your post, he said your mailbox is ugly and falling down and kind of hillbilly looking. It is not. I don't think I heard him say the word hillbilly, but you, I heard well, you call not him ugly. He, no, I did not call him ugly. I said he was at, saying ugly things. I did not say he was ugly. I don't even know who he is. Steven, he, he's over there crying now. I, you made him cry. Ex excuse me? Because you called him ugly and. No, ma ma I did listen, not call him ugly. Ma Excuse he, he is. What? Uh, he is ugly, uh, but like you he's know sensitive what? I, about it. I'm not gonna. I did not. <laughs> I did not say he was ugly. I said he was saying ugly things. That's he the first thing you said to me when we got on the phone. You said he was being ugly. He was being ugly, not that he is ugly. He's said some ugly things. Okay, so you just you're just calling to tattle on yourself. What? What's this call regarding? He called and said that you guys are moving all the mailboxes for our street Steve right Dave, in front of our house. Don't, don't cry, Steve. Dave. It's fine. She didn't mean it. She meant you're you're acting ugly. Sorry. Does he have to be on the line for this? Oh, no, I was just yelling. I was just uh, calling over to him because he's in I, the office. I, was, I did not say he was ugly. I have no idea what he looks like. I've never met the man. Oh, for goodness sakes. I said that he was acting ugly, meaning that he said some ugly things to me in that what he said was, your house is ugly. He said that, your house is ugly, and then he said, well, your house, first thing he said was, your house doesn't look very good anyway. Well, it does. And our yard looks nice. Oh, is this the, the family who were putting the mailboxes in front of your house? Excuse me, what? Uh, are you the, we're, we're putting the, like, he didn't even tell me who's on the phone. Are, are you the ones that were putting those silver mailboxes? Well, I guess so. That's the first we've heard of it. Okay. Well, that's great. I mean, that's going to be no, really convenient I, we're not for you. Real, we're not, no, we're not real happy with that. Okay. It's going to take away from the curb appeal of our house. But you won't have to mow that little strip of grass I don't, in the front. I don't care. We don't mind mowing it. My husband loves doing yard work, and he does a very, oh. very good job of it. And we don't want it there. We're going to have a row of, like, how many mailboxes in front of our house? Uh, it's going to be 120 to start out with. It's, it's just going to be... 120 gonna be, mailboxes. They're going to be three, three high. You know, three mailboxes high. But... Eventually. No, Excuse me, you can't put that many mailboxes in front of our house. Yeah, but we're also going to put lockers up on top of them probably I this don't... summer. Are you are you kidding me? So, oh, in all, it's going to be about seven feet tall. Is this a joke? No, I wouldn't. We wouldn't kid about this, ma'am. We're, we're seven this... feet tall in front of our house. You can't put that in front of a house. We're doing this all over town. It's just to make things more convenient. It's making it more convenient for you. Meanwhile, it's taken away from our property value. Yeah, but the mailbox will be right in front of your house. You can go out there and just get I your mail. I don't care. I don't care. It's right in front of our house now. Nobody puts them in front of a house. You put them on the side. No. Where, where, exa where exactly are you putting it? Uh, it's going to be in that little strip of grass out in front of your right. house. It's going to start at one edge of your driveway. So be careful backing out. You don't want to hit it. And it's going to go all the way down to your neighbor's driveway. So it's going to No, it is going to go from our driveway down to our neighbor's driveway. It's eventually going to be 7 feet high. No, that is unacceptable. Well, it's only going to be 5 feet high until summer. 5 and feet high tall until summer and then it's going to be 7 feet high. No, that is not acceptable. Not in in front of somebody's house. It's going to take away from our property value. Ma you're making a big deal out of nothing. It's fine. No, I don't think I am. 7 5 feet tall. 
stretched out right in front of our house? Yeah, from no. one edge of the driveway to the other. And the so other. Who do I talk? Who do we talk to about this to not get it done? I, because I we are. Well, it's too late at this point. You should have been attending city council meetings and, and voted. Or nobody told us anything about it. Well, you, you got to take an interest in local affairs. You have to, you know, just. You know, read, read the we paper. have to take an interest in local affairs. We should have. Uh, we we knew nothing about this, and so we'll call. This must be a crank call. No, it's nobody's not. Nobody's come out to our house. Nobody's come to our oh, house to talk to us about that. Why hadn't somebody come to our house to tell us about this? Oh, we sent a um, letter, and you know, we talked to no, our next we, door neighbor. No, we have not gotten any letter from you. No, oh, you probably just thought it was junk mail and threw it out. No, no. Who is your boss? Well, the the postmaster. He's not here right now. I mean, What's he's, his he's, name? He's getting ready to leave. His name is Chad. Well, I'd like to speak to him. But you know, I'd we, like to speak to we, we talked to your next door neighbor, and um, they didn't don't care. complain this much. I don't care. Like, let me speak to your your boss. I mean, the the wall is going to be convenient for another reason because you can. I don't your, care if it's con it, yeah. It might be convenient for it. Our, our mailbox is plenty convenient right now. You're going to want to put some lights right out there too because it's going to create kind of like a dark, shadowy area for. We don't want it, period. Okay, period. but I'm just saying you can hide your trash cans back there. I, I don't. Back, back behind Our it. trash cans are fine where they are. They're in the garage, and that's none of your business anyway. But let me speak to your boss, please. Ma'am, I just, I pulled up. I, I'm looking at your house on Street View, and you say your, yeah. your husband's really good with the lawn, but to be honest, this lawn looks kind of scraggly. Who are you? Are, is this a joke? No, I would, yard look, what number? What number do you have? What's I, our address? I wouldn't joke about this. Like you need True Green or something, because like the what? What I address is what? What address are you looking at? One clean. No, it's it's uh, our yard does not look scraggly. It's always the best on the street. Well, Everybody says so. Maybe, and who are you to say that? Maybe, oh my goodness! No, I'm just maybe it was a bad day when Street You took the photo. So I'm, I'm just looking on the internet. I would, I'd like you. to speak to the postmaster, please. But like, there's these, the like, they look like I would weeds, like to speak like, to the postmaster, please. Right there, where the little telephone thing comes up in the front. There's like this. I would like. No, you're looking at the wrong house. No, it, it's stiff. It's. Is I, it? Does it have a big porch all the way across the front? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. All the way across the front, because a lot of them have porches, but ours goes all the way across. Ma'am, is is your address the one? Yes, it is. I would like to speak to your boss, please, the postmaster, please, right now. Okay. Yeah, let, let me... Chad! Oh, my God. Just, just a minute. It's not. It's from the it's phone. It's the U.S. Postal Service. Five feet high from our driveway to the next driveway. Hello, this is Chad. Hello? Hey, it's Chad. Is this a real person? Of course. Chad who? I, look, what did you say to Carol? Because she's crying. She's crying now. Because, first of all, is was it Steve called and said that they're putting a five-feet row of a hundred and something mailboxes yeah. in front of our house? Yeah, Steve's crying too because you called him ugly. No, I did not. Is this a prank call? That I did not call him ugly. Well, he says you called him ugly. He well, was, I did not. I've been consoling him while you yell at Carol. I did not call him ugly. I told him he was acting ugly because he told me that my house is ugly and our yard is ugly. And our mailbox is ugly. He's the one that said that. And well, all I said was you are acting, uh, saying ugly things is what I said. I feel and like... I, I she don't told me that she's looking at a picture of our house and it's so good. Oh, Who, what kind of what kind of professional people say things like that to people? Well, I think she was just stating matter of factly. Like I, I, she, I, I see it on her screen right now. You know, this, this yard looks. You look like hobos live there. Did you just say that to me? Well, I'm just saying. What is your name? What is your name? This is Chad. Chad who? Chad McChatterson. Oh, this is a prank call. What? What are you talking about? Prank call. Who makes prank calls? Holy shit, that went on way too long. 
So I'm noticing that the Google Street View, you know, it's from 2013. Maybe they didn't live there. So it's not her husband's fault that the yard looks like crap. That's just the previous people that live there. That's all. But damn it, everybody's mailbox is out in the street in this town. I'm going to have to go to the next town over or just keep doing that because that was kind of fun. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Hole? Yes. Hey there, uh, this is Steve Dave from the post office. Yes. Um, called to let you know we're going to be parking one of our uh, post office trucks in your driveway tonight. Okay. So it's, it's just going to be there for uh, three or four days. Just don't worry about it, okay? It'll be uh, right in your driveway in front of the garage. In our driveway? Yeah, yeah, we're going to be parking it right, right in your driveway. Like you don't have any other cars there right now, do you? In the driveway, we do. Oh, you're going to need to move those because the post office truck's got to be there. We can't have it just sitting in the street. And why did they choose our driveway? It's just a convenient area, you know, just a convenient location. It's just going to be three or four days. It's not a big deal. Well, we're going to need to move it to go in and out of our driveway. It's connected to our garage. We'll Who just, is this? just park in the street. Yeah, I don't think this is the post office. Why would you say that? <laughs> Um, uh, because <laughs> I'm not giving any information out. I'm not asking for any information, ma'am. I'm just letting you know they're, they're going to be there later. There's going to be two post office trucks show up. One of them's going to park in your driveway and then they will give the other guy, the other one will give the guy a ride home. Okay. So, well, they can't park in our driveway because we have to have cars go in and out of our garage. Well, so in your, in your lawn then. Um, just on, on the, it. on the edge of the lawn. Ma'am, who are you um, talking to? You're being kind of rude. Um, I'm hanging up now. Goodbye. Bye. People are so rude. Hello? Hello, Debbie? Yes. Hey there, it's Steve Dave from the post office. Yes. I was calling to let you know, um, we're going to be po- parking a, uh, a post office truck in your driveway here in just a little bit. For what? Uh, they just need somewhere to park it. So it's just going to be there for about three days. They'll probably pick it up on Saturday. A post office spot. What is it? It's a post office truck. You know, the, the little trucks that we use to, to deliver mail. Why would they put it in our driveway? Uh, it's just, you know, a convenient spot. They're just going to park it there. It's just going to be for about, about three days. And then they'll, uh, someone will come pick it up. It's nothing to worry about. Who is this? Uh, this is Steve Day from the post office. What? <laughs> this is not making sense. Okay. It, it's not that hard to grasp. We're just going to be parking a post office truck in your driveway tonight. Post office truck in our driveway? Yeah. Yeah, they, we just don't need it for a few days. We're, we're not going to need it until Saturday deliveries. So. I can tell this is not a legit call. What do you mean? What? How can she tell? Hello? Hello, Leslie? Uh-huh. Hey there, it's Steve Dave from the post office. Hi, okay. Hi there. Uh-oh, Uh-oh. what Hi. do you mean? What happened? Well, I don't know. What's at the post office? Oh, well, uh, the postman, he was going to deliver a package to you today. Like, you have a box? Okay. Uh, but you don't have a wheelchair ramp on the front of your house, so he wasn't able to get up there? The postman is disabled. I'm sorry? Our postman is? Yeah, well, the one that was working today. The one that was delivering oh, okay. the box. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was going to say Crook's not. Oh, yeah. No, it's um, a priority. It was like a large priority box. And he couldn't get up there to oh, bring it to the door. Dude, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're supposed to have a wheelchair ramp okay. on the front of your house. No, I do not. We just have steps. I know, but you're supposed to get a wheelchair ramp, like, because, you know, you have a disabled postman delivering on Wednesdays. I am? Yeah, yeah, it's like the Disabilities Act of 2002. All, okay, all houses, I was not aware of this. Yeah, I mean, usually uh, people don't pay much attention because uh, it's, uh, you know, most people don't have disabled postman delivering. Right. But, yep, right. no, you're going to need to get a wheelchair ramp up there very soon. He okay. Ju- he just started not too long ago. Okay. 
Um, so what should I do about the box? Uh, um, can you have a wheelchair ramp up by tomorrow? Because he's going to be delivering tomorrow, too. I can't build a, a wheelchair ramp in one day. Well, no. just go to go to Lowe's or Home Depot and just pick one up. They're about $1,000. Is this a joke? Oh, no, I wouldn't kid about this, ma'am. It's the Disabilities Act of 2002. Okay. What? We're going to call Josh and see if this is a real thing. Ma'am, can you tell that guy in the background just to shut the fuck up? You're on the phone. And also the kid while you're at it, because the kid's been screaming the entire time. You know, I, I didn't have kids for a reason, because I don't want to listen to that all day. Shouldn't have to listen to it on the phone. Ma'am? Ma'am? I can hear you guys on the line still I can hear you on the line as well okay all right you just you got all quiet anyway um, you can come to the post office and pick up the box anytime after 3 p.m. okay or just get a wheelchair ramp like a civilized human being this is really rude like it, he's just going on and on you're on the phone Tell me. Was he on the phone with someone else? Ma'am, what's happening? I just hear your husband talking in the background. President, I'm getting Steve. What was your name again? Steve. Who's he talking to? Ma'am. Who's he? Who's he talking to? Hello, ma'am. This is Carol, the supervisor. Is, 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 is everything okay? Steve just handed me the phone and walked off. Hello? Hello. Sure. This, this is Carol from the post office. Can I help you? I'm very confused at what's happening right now. Incredibly confused. Okay. Uh, is, this... is this the post office? Correct. Yes, it is. Can you provide proof that it is? I cannot. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't believe me, though. If they keep it there, we'll pick it up. Well, I don't know if this is a prank call, because I cannot believe the audacity this guy just had speaking to me. Right. I, he had some attitude on there. I'm sorry, man. What did it... Well, what's... Is there a problem? Do, do I, you need to talk to me? Or there's a big problem with the way that... I'm sorry? I, I can let you go if there's... I, I just... You weren't saying anything. I wasn't sure what was happening. Oh, my God. Hello? All right, I'm going to hang up. I, I don't know what this is. Is this a prank call? No, it's not a prank. Is it a prank call? You tell me. Well, because did you... the way your associate just spoke to me is outrageous, outrageously rude. He just told me he didn't have children for a reason because he could hear my child in the background. Oh, yeah, Steve, Dave, he's single. This has to be a fucking joke. Ma'am, don't curse at me. <laughs> that, that's incredibly Who rude. Who is this, and what do you want? Oh, is this still the lady? You sound like a lady. Yeah, well, this is her husband. Oh, my gosh. I want to know why somebody is Sir. talking to my wife the way that they are. Sir. Sir. I heard the way the man was speaking to her and was saying that he didn't have children for a reason because of the way that my child was, he could hear them in the background. Okay, well, yeah, I wasn't on the call. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, I want, if, if you are not a manager, I would like to speak to one immediately. Wait, is this still Leslie? This is her husband, Brad. Oh, my gosh. Put some base. I would like to speak to somebody in upper management immediately. Okay, I can put the postmaster on, but wow, Brad, put some bass in your voice. Because you sound Thanks. like a woman. Put him on. I'm just saying, you sound... Yeah, this is a joke. Goodbye. Oh, fucking Brad, he sounds like a girl. I think we can all agree with that. But there's a twist for the old mailbox ramp thing going up to the door. Tell them they're not getting their packages until they get a wheelchair ramp. That'll teach them not to comply with the Disabilities Act of 2002. Hello? Hello, Greg? Yeah. Hey there, it's Steve Dave from the post office. 
Hello? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I guess they were trying to deliver a package to you today, and the postman couldn't get up to your porch because you don't have a wheelchair ramp? No, we do not. Yeah, yeah, that's... He, he's a disabled man, a disabled postman. You're going to need to get a wheelchair ramp installed on the front of your house. Uh, why? Well, just for package deliveries. It's to, to comply with the Disabilities Act of 2002. I'm not a business, and I'm not doing modifications. Well, no, it's just it's for, for you know, if you have a disabled postman or disabled utility worker that needs to come and take a look at anything... You're supposed to have a wheelchair. If that's what I have to do. If that's what I have to do. Your legal counsel can send me any, uh, a letter. Well, it's it's pretty much common knowledge. I mean, no, what, it's not. Do you do you hate disabled people? You, excuse, no. If you have a legal issue, you can send me a certified letter. I'll be happy. Well, to Well, it's take not care a legal that. issue for me. It's a legal issue for you. You're not compi- complying with the Disabilities Act. No, I'm not a business. But, that that doesn't no, matter. You don't it, understand. It applies to everybody, sir. But anyway, we have. I a, don't know who you are. I don't know where you're calling from. I told this you be, this is Steve Dave from the post office. We have a box here for I, you. You can come and pick it up I, if you want. If you don't want to comply with the Disabilities Act, but you know you're being I, kind of an asshole to disabled people. Oh really? You represent the U.S. office, and you're calling me an asshole. Well, just only because you're you, you seem like you're really no. against accommodating no, disabled I'm not. people. I don't appreciate you calling me and telling me I have to install a wheelchair ramp. You don't know the law. Well, I, I know that we have you a disabled work in construction law. You have a disabled postman on your street. Do you work? Do he, you work in construction? He can't even bring. No. He can't even bring a, a box up to your door. I'm done kind of having this conversation. Like he couldn't reach. <laughs> Wow, do I know construction law? No, I don't know construction law. I work at the post office. Hello? Hello, Tammy? Yes. Hey there. Uh, this is Steve Day from the post office. Yeah. Uh, I'm calling to let you know we're going to be upgrading your the mailbox in front of your house. Okay. You're, you're going to get an e-box. Okay. So it's, it's going to be uh, electric, you know, um... And we'll leave, I know you have that mailbox out there already, that belongs to you. We'll leave that, you know, in your driveway, so be sure not to run over that. They're probably going to come out tomorrow, though, and replace it. They're going to do a bunch on your street. Really? Yep. Okay, Okay. I never heard of such a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, instead of, um, you're not going to have, it's not going to be a box, per se, anymore. It's just going to be a computer screen with a keyboard on it. And all, all of your mail is going to be digitized onto the screen, and we won't even bring it out anymore. It'll just you'll just walk out out there to your e box and check your mail and check your mail that oh. way. That's strange. Yeah, well, you know, it's the future. That's that's how we're doing it now. We're finally catching up to the rest oh, of the yeah. world. Sorry, what? Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, it's, so, just, it's just going to be a large computer terminal right there uh, on the edge of your driveway. How strange. What do you mean strange? Never, uh, very odd. I never heard of such a thing. Seems like I would have gotten some notification. Oh, it's it's been in the paper and stuff. Don't you read the paper? I think everyone reads the paper. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's just it's going to it's going to be like a blue it's going to look like one of those old-fashioned blue mailboxes. Mm-hmm. That you you see out in the street, but you can't put any mail in it like there's no no place for uh packages or anything. There's just going to be a keyboard that flips down and you put in your password and all that and you check your mail that way. That's going to replace hmm. your mailbox. It's going to be solar powered. So there won't be any extra wires or anything. Okay. So we have to do it that way. We have no choice, huh? Correct. Yes. Yeah. We're not going to actually bring stuff out anymore unless you get a priority box. Then there'll be a a truck just for priority boxes for priority mail. Huh. Okay. And so for coupons and things like that? Oh, they'll be digitized. Uh, you can actually um, 
you know, configure this to, uh, you know, connect with your printer inside your house. And you can just print out all your mail if you want to. So you can print out coupons and any checks you get in the mail, anything like that. And you can just print it out. Okay. But this way you don't have to print out everything. You know, it'll save save a lot of paper. Yeah. And so a personal letter from a loved one? Yeah, it's going to be digitized. And we'll just throw it away here. Oh, my God. We, we've got machines now. They automatically open up the mail, and they scan it, and then they uh, send it to your e-box. This is hilarious. What do you mean, hilarious? <laughs> if this is uh, real, then whatever, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, they're they're 75% accurate, so they're. it's not like you're going to lose. It's, it's unlikely you're going to lose letters from loved ones. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> okay, whatever you say. Why do you keep saying hilarious and weird and odd and all that? Well, I, I'm done. I got to go, but thanks for the heads up. Where do you have to go? What are you doing? Goodbye. What are you doing? <laughs> Lady doesn't give a shit about the future. I remember doing calls like this a couple years ago where the mailboxes were attached to their house. But this is even more hilarious that it's out on the street. They're going to have to walk out in the snow and the rain and stuff and check their e-box. Hello? Hello, Kyle? Yes. Hey there. Uh, this is Steve Dave from the post office. Yes. Um, the postmaster wanted me to give you a call and just let you know that he doesn't like you. Okay. And that's it. He just wanted me to deliver the message. Okay, good to know. All right, have a nice day. Is this serious? Oh, yeah, of course. The Postmaster Chad. What? The Postmaster Chad. Postmaster Chad. Correct. Yeah, he doesn't like you. He just handed me a, a post-it note and asked me to give you a call. Why does he not like me? I don't know. It's none of my business. It's between you and him. The postmaster. Yeah, he does not like you. Are you fucking with me? No, of course not. He, he just... Like, look, I, I don't have his time to sit here on the phone all day. I'm just calling to let you know the postmaster does not like you. End of message. That's all the information I have. Well, why in the hell would you place this call in the first place to call me when you don't have any further information? Who the fuck are you? Well, I, I, I'm just an employee here at the post office, and he wanted me to call you up and let you know that he does not like you. That's all. Okay, well, what's his name and phone number? I'd like to speak with him. Uh, it's, his name's Chad, and just look on your caller ID. That's his phone number. So the number you just called me at? Correct, yeah. I mean, I can transfer you to his office. I don't think he wants to talk to you, though. He doesn't like you. Well, transfer me to his office, then. <sighs> All right. Just just a minute, please. Our representatives are currently busy. Please stay on the line, and your call will be answered by the next available... Hello, this is Chad. Who is this? Uh, this is Chad. Who's calling, please? Okay, yeah, this is fun. What, what do you mean? I'm, I'm confused. Well, obviously, you're not Chad, and you're not a postmaster. I am, too. And you're I'm calling the, me to... I'm the postmaster of this city, sir. Okay, and your name is Chad. What's your last name? Gersperms. Okay, yeah, go fuck yourself. What? Who is this? I don't know. I just got a phone call saying that the postmaster doesn't like me, and now this is bullshit because it's some doctored fucking voice that you're calling me at. Oh, is this, is this Kyle? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. It's not, nothing nothing to worry about. I, I just, I don't like you. Well, yeah, why don't you like me? Well, I mean, for one thing, you just cursed at me. And okay, ma well, you called me to tell me that you didn't like me before I cursed at you. So what's the point of the phone well, call? Well, you, ma you made fun of my voice. So you don't seem like a very likable person to begin with. Oh, who fucking cares what you think? Well, there's another reason I don't like you. Because... Okay, well, you're not the postmaster. Your name isn't Chad. You got some bullshit recorded voice. So if you're fucking with me, you can tell me who you are. What do you mean a recorded voice? Really? I'm a real voice, sir. 
Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. I don't know what you're trying to say. Okay, well, if this is how you get your kicks, then I think you probably need to find a better life. Well, I think you need to work on being a better liked person. Oh, really? Well, I happen to be liked by most people that I deal with, but I don't have people randomly calling me in the middle of the day to tell me that they're the postmaster and they don't like me for no apparent reason. I find it hard to believe that most people like you because you, you sound like a real asshole. Yeah, well, shove it up your fucking ass. Now, what's your real name? See? My, my name is Chad. Chad what? How is that not believable? It's a very common name. Okay. Well, this is cute. Have fun with the rest of your day and go fuck yourself. Yeah, you too. Have fun not being liked by anyone. I had some other idea for that call, and I just went through about, like, ten people that didn't answer, and by the time Kyle picked up, I had completely forgotten what I was going to do. Was I going to do another e-box? Maybe that was it. I definitely need to do another e-box. You know, just one more before we end today's show, because nobody's been pissed off about the e-box yet. And holy shit, someone called me out on my voice. I mean, maybe just because he was expecting a guy. Maybe it was more about the fact that Chad didn't sound manly enough for him. Hello? hello. Oh, hello, Harold? Yes? Uh, this is Steve Dave from the post office. Yes. I, I was calling to let you know where um, there's going to be some workmen out there tomorrow. They're going to be replacing your mailbox. Really? Yes, they're going to replace it with one of those new e-boxes. An e-box? Yes, What's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like a computer terminal out, out there by the road. Well, I don't, know I don't want about. that. I don't know anything about this. Oh, no, it's the way we're going to do things from now on. Uh, instead of getting physical mail, we're going to digitize it. And to check your mail. No, 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 no. I don't want that. Sorry. No. This doesn't sound. This doesn't sound legit to me at all. Sir, that we're doing this for everybody, the whole town. Wow. Sorry, I couldn't uh, catch your call. Uh, I'll return it as soon as I can. Now he's not picking up. He was not a fan of the e box, though. Hello. Hello, James. Yes. This is Steve Dave from the post office. Okay. I was calling to let you know we're going to be uh, out there. There's going to be some workmen out there tomorrow. They're going to replace your mailbox. Why would they replace my mailbox? Uh, they're going to replace it with an e-box. So Are you sure you have the right James? Yeah, 106 drive. What is an e-box? Uh, well, instead of getting physical mail, uh, it's going to be a computer terminal out there by the street. And you'll just walk out there and check your mail from the computer terminal. And if I don't want that? Oh, no, we're, we're doing it for everybody. We're just doing your neighborhood this week. And but if I don't want that, what if I want regular mail? Oh, uh, no, we don't do that anymore because uh, you know, this is just as good. It scan we have a machine here. It scans your mail automatically, and it puts it on the screen out there at your e-box out there by the road. You just got to stand at the road and read it. No way. What do you mean, no way? I don't, I don't want that. I... Well, you don't really get a choice. You know, that, that's just the way things are going now. Everyone's going to have the e-box. If everyone's going to have the e-box, okay, I guess I have no choice. Yeah, yeah, it'll be more convenient. You'll see. I can't see how it would be, but okay. Well, no, it's, it's like the mail will get to you faster. You won't have to wait for it to be delivered by a truck like it's the 20th century. It's all going to come to your e-box out there by the road. There's going to be a computer terminal in front of everyone's house. And if you want to write anyone back, you just write them back from your e-box. And so it's 20 degrees below zero out there. At the street where my e box is at. Well, don't exaggerate. And I'm to write somebody back and send them an email. Well, you're you're exaggerating. It's not going to be twenty below. It gets but, twenty below. Well, just don't go out those days, or wear a coat. Get a scarf. Wear a coat and a scarf. That's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous to wear a coat and a scarf, sir. No, it's ridiculous to expect somebody to go out at twenty degrees below zero and stand read a letter and write a letter to somebody using a terminal that's out at the street. 
Well, yeah, Whether it could be a foot of snow, a blizzard going on, or 20 degrees below zero. You're acting like there's bad weather every day. Most days are good weather. Mm, not in uh, I live here, so I think I would know. It's pretty nice I've out lived today. Here, I've lived here all my life, and I think I would know. I've probably lived here longer than you. I doubt it. Well, it's not a contest, sir. I'm just calling to let you know hey. about your new e-box. Okay, thank you. Like, Goodbye. All, all of your letters are going to get shredded. I mean, it's not like he has to respond from the e-box. He can just try to remember what it said on the screen and then go back inside and write a letter back to whoever, like a damn caveman or something. And, you know, he has a good point. Like, you know, it's going to be cold out there. There's going to be weather. Maybe e-boxes should be enclosed inside of a booth, you know, very similar to a phone booth. But we'll make them a bit bigger because this is 2020. Everyone's a little bit fatter these days. So we'll have an oversized phone booth in the front of everyone's house. That's how we're going to modernize mail delivery. We'll put little heaters in there, little air conditioners. This is going to be so good for the earth because we won't have all those trucks driving around. What a brilliant idea. I ought to try and sell this to the post office. I'm pretty much a fucking genius. Brad! Hey. Big boy, it's been a while. I miss you. You too. I haven't left though. I've been here. Just, just very quiet. Okay. And um, you might be annoyed at this one. I don't know if you will or not, but um, if you are, don't worry about it. I was just wondering if you would be able to give an updated list of podcasts that you listen to. Because you get some pretty good recommendations. I did today on the intro. I said I listened to The Dick Show and I listened to Distorted View. Two years ago. And I wanted to know if you still listen to some or if you've added new ones that maybe you think others might find interesting. Obviously, you already know I'm a Distorted View listener. You hear me on that. Um, but, uh, yeah, any others, I would appreciate any suggestions and bye. bye. Yeah, definitely give distorted view a chance. Distortedview.com. Tim Henson does some amazing stuff on his show, you know, like, uh, I don't know, reviewing gay porn and playing audio of public freakouts. He's a lot of fun. He's been doing stuff forever. And I just had to reset my cell phone about a month ago because uh, I was having cell phone problems. I had to just hard reset it. So I lost all my podcasts. I didn't think to back those up. I'm such a dummy. So I don't have all of my podcasts in here like I normally do. But the ones I do have in here are another prank call show. Of course, that's King Richard. He basically does my show, but he's funnier. Even though I'm sure he's going to say that I stole the, you know, placing mailboxes in front of people's houses. He's going to say I stole that from him. He's going to be like, I was doing that with Amazon lockers like a year ago, Brad, you fucking thief. But I highly recommend him. He does a lot of really fun stuff. Another prank call show dot com. And I listen to Darknet Diaries. It's kind of done like an NPR podcast, but it's not NPR. It's just some nerd talking about computer security stories. But he does it in a really interesting way. So I don't know if I can really sell that as being interesting. I'm sure that sounds incredibly boring to everyone, but give it a chance. He's the guy that did an entire episode about skunk works and his underground tunnels. That's how I first heard of him. It's really good stuff. Uh, I'm subscribed to people on here that I don't really listen to because I usually try to catch them live, like Devin Anus Tart and Dwight the Janitor. Madhouse Live hasn't posted anything in almost a year. Guaranteed Audio. That's Neil Ciceriga from Lemon Demon. That's his podcast. I haven't listened to it yet. Somebody recommended it to me the other day and I subscribed. I haven't listened. So yeah, that's all I have for now. You know, the, the Dick Show, of course. I never miss a Dick Show in more ways than one. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I don't have a lot. I can't really think off the top of my head what else I listen to. I've lost everything. I've kind of got a clean slate here, which sucks. I miss all my old shows. I was listening to a Dolly Parton show, like a limited edition show with some radio lab guy in it interviewing people about Dolly Parton. Don't ask why. It was really good, though. I really liked that one. I don't expect anyone else out there to go out and find it. But uh, yeah, that's all I got right now. But don't I have a video somewhere of all the podcasts that I used to listen to? I need to watch that video so I can repopulate my podcast list here of stuff that I like to listen to. Hi, Brad. It's Rachel. I'm calling from Australia. Um, I just wanted to say that I discovered your show by accident by listening to Mr. Doubleina's prank phone call podcast. Yes. And I now listen to Snowplow show. That was the plan, to get everyone to listen to that and get new listeners out of it. My plan has finally worked. I think you're the first person I've heard say that. It was a genius plan. Time it's really just wanted to say I love your show. You have a, an international fan. Um, I've always wanted to call, but 
only just heard the number. So thank you for such a great show, and maybe I'll call you again. That's okay. Rachel from Australia. Thanks, Bye. Rachel. We have an international fan, everyone, all the way from Australia. If only we had more hey, Brad. people from... Hey, from Australia. Oh. How the hell are you? Hey, hey, Dave. I've been hanging out every uh, Thursday afternoon, which is Wednesday night, your time. Yeah. Uh, in hope of uh, another uh, Hang Up the Phone show. Yeah, well, you know what? We did, we did one like two or three weeks ago, and you missed it. You weren't there. But unfortunately, it's all I your missed fault. out the last couple of Thursdays, yeah. Wednesday night, your time. Anyway, it's basically Devin's fault because the thing with hang up the phone is that we've always gone on immediately after Devin. She does her show on Wednesday nights. By the way, everybody should listen to that tonight if I get this released before she starts. But she usually starts at 630 my time and ends around 930 my time. And that's when we'd start up hang up the phone. But her schedule has caused her to start going on three hours later than normal. And by the time her show ends, I just don't want to do it. So really, I just need to move to a different night. I think Thursday nights are free. I should do Thursday nights. That's like the only night that nothing's happening really these days. Maybe like it this week. Who knows? Yeah, uh, maybe. I just want to uh, reply I to doubt it, though. one of the messages that Nadia, the chick that draws, um, you asked for uh, recommendations as to what she should draw. Uh, I think with the upcoming uh, Top Gun movie, that's coming out uh, in June 2020. Why doesn't Nadia draw something Top Gun inspired or Tom Cruise inspired? Yeah, Top um, Gun, Nadia. Anyway, that's the danger when you Do ask it. for a request as to what someone should draw that you get wacky things like Top Gun related. Um, have a great day, Brad, and hopefully I'll uh, talk to you on uh, Thursday this week, Wednesday night, uh, your time. Okay. Have a good one. Hopefully, Thanks, you never Nadia. know. If I'm not on, though, maybe you should just listen to Devin's show. Nadia, I think you should draw, like, uh, the, you know, Tom Cruise and whoever else was in that movie. I don't think I ever even watched Top Gun in the 80s. But draw them in fighter jets, but they have walkers and beards and old man canes shaking them out the, the jet window. That's what you should do. Hey, this is Bad Cat. I heard you say you were going to try to stop doing the, um, the who. My name is H.U., but I'm also like a person. It's it's a yeah. I, yeah. I, I think you should keep that in your repertoire because that is definitely good for fucking with people in the right yeah. I like it. I don't think it works for every call. No, no, but. it definitely ruins a lot of calls. I agree with that. But when it works, I really enjoy doing that. I think in the right situation, that can really bother some people. Yeah, just screws with their head it. more. So definitely keep doing it. I will. Um, I'm I love, never gonna I, quit. That's one of my favorite parts. So, Thanks. Uh, yeah. That's it. People really seem divided on that one. A lot of people hate the Who thing. A lot of people love it. I love it. I wouldn't normally call back so soon. You know, I like to do that. Yeah, I don't understand anything you're saying. Thanks for keeping it under 30 seconds, though. <laughs> Listen to this. You're going to have to try this again, sir. Yep. Great voicemail. Oh, hey there, Brad. You remember me? Long time caller. No. Uh, Grim. You know, used to play Xbox with you. Oh, yeah. The good old yeah, days. Yeah, pretty good times. But I stopped listening to you because your shows got kind of bad. Yeah, they did. But I'm listening again. Yay. Good, buddy. Keep it up. Okay, thanks Bye. for calling my shows bad. I stopped playing Xbox with you because you were boring. No, that's not true. It's because I moved to the PC. Hey, Brad, it's Patrick from Illinois. Hey. I was just thinking the other day. So you had a job, right, in the before time doing what you did, and now you do not do that anymore, and you are solely focused on doing the snowplow show. Pretty much. Which is phenomenal, because think about it. In a way, you're not in a way, but you are earning a living by making prank calls. Yeah, that's I am paying off my restitution. By making prank calls. By the way, speaking of restitution, I was uh, looking to see how much I'd paid on that the other day, and I have paid off half of my restitution now. I owe around $20,000 of restitution, not to mention all the attorney fees, which I've paid off, but I've paid off $10,000 in restitution, only $10,000 to go. We're halfway there, everyone. Keep supporting oh, the show. That is your purpose. And I'm wondering, because you and I are about the same age, I'm, I think, but if you go back in time to mid-80s, early-90s Brad and let him know that someday 
your job, little Brad, is going to be making prank calls. You'll be compensated for messing with people on the phone. I think that would make little Brad very happy. Yeah, you probably right, be man. like, Congrats. you're full of shit, old man. Who's <laughs> You're not me, you big fucking fatso. Congratulations. Hope you have a good week. Bye. Thanks. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with doing prank calls for a living. It's fun. I can't complain. I, I really, I'm not counting on this lasting forever. I'm just riding it for as long as I can. I'm sure one of these days this is all going to fall apart. I'll be working at Carl's Jr. or something. Hey, this is Paul from Seattle. Hey. So, I understand your concern about Duke. So, um, I mean, Brad Carter. So, Brad Carter. Do seven barks. Okay, do, do three barks. I mean, Brad Carter, do three barks. Okay, do, say Brad Carter. <laughs> what? No. Okay, now I'm starting to think that's not even a dog. You've got your little brother there doing dog noises or something. Do it again. Say Brad Carter. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, there you go. Bye. Okay, I want video. I once again don't believe you at all. Post video of that somewhere. All right. Hey. Rick, much boy here. I know. Listen, I've uh, really enjoyed these past uh, shows you've done. Uh, Thanks. Seems kind of like a different format. Uh, is it? You're kind of just winging it, which is great. You're, you're like, I, you know, you've just been taking people's requests from emails. Oh, yeah. A little yeah. bit of the, uh, you know, stole your always done a little bit of that. I think it's great. I like it, but it's, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to have a, a certain format. You're just doing your thing. And That's all. true. Fuck I hope formats. I, have, and I hope you don't get tired of it, though, because uh, I have never really sent you no personal requests before. I can make a nice old spreadsheet. Some really good uh, uh, people. Yeah, do it. it. So uh, look for that soon. And, you know. I'm Hopefully up for it. Anybody that wants to send me requests can do that by going to snowplowshow.com slash request. I think the URL is. It's an option up there in the menu bar. In the air. This uh, old Roy has got tired of that crap. But uh, anyway, all jokes aside, good stuff. Keep it up. As always, root break out. Root break one here. And I am, you know, a little bit behind on requests. Like here, let me look in my prank request folder. I currently have... 475 messages in my prank request folder and let me go all the way back to the beginning the earliest one is from april of 2016 so i've got four years of requests in here i really do try to go through these and get them done but i get a lot of requests and i just don't get to them all sometimes they just kind of get lost in the request folder sorry about that everyone but you know just try at least send a request in Hey Brad, it's 1738. Uh, did you know that Onage Pranks is stealing your guys' stuff again? Oh and no! In one of the new videos, or he's calling someone a banchode and matterchode, and he goes and changes their voicemail greeting. Oh, what the yeah, hell? He's stealing your stuff. Really? I'm surprised he does that. The the voicemail greeting changing part, anyway. But banchode, matterchode, that's not even mine. That's more like Carlito's stuff and Dwight's stuff. I stole that from them, but I don't really do it a whole lot. And I definitely don't do voicemail hacking anymore since I'm a felon for hacking now. Hey, Brad. Steve in the heart of Texas. Sober and driving home from work. Uh, had a really uh, rough, like, fucking weekend, man. Uh, problems with my girlfriend and shit. But oh, I just I'm wanted sorry. to say, man, your recent episode with the dick, the dick slapping. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it just brought a fucking tear to my eye. Uh, do you really think he slapped his dick on the Oh, phone? yeah, I really think he did. <laughs> I gotta know. Um, I forgot to mention on the end of that show, the dick slapping show, uh, while I was doing my editing and stuff, he kept calling Devin back over and over and over and leaving messages, like really wanting to talk to me again or talk to someone again. So he must have really liked Carol's sexy voice because he wanted to do another round yeah, of I that. I say, man, you made my day. Uh, thanks, man. I'm... <laughs> Hope it'll get, it'll get better. You're welcome. I hope it gets better, too. Tell your girlfriend to shut the fuck up. It really is incredible how much dick slapping you hear on Devin's shows. And Daisy's sometimes. And they are definitely doing it. They are perverted old men from the South, mostly, that they call. You asked me what I'm calling from. I'm calling from my cell phone. Oh, okay. Great voicemail there. Thanks for letting me know where you're calling from. 
Oh, here's another one from the same person. I saw something online saying you got raided by the FBI. Explain. Uh, no, I explained in the last show. Go listen to the last show, or maybe it was the show before the last show. I don't remember. I'm tired of explaining it. I need to add that to the phonelosers.com slash FAQ thing and explain why I got raided by the FBI. Hey, Brad. This is Mitch from Alaska. Just wanted to call and tell you that I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to, too. That's See you later. Great. Congratulations on your drug use. Hello, Mr. Carter. This is Rex in Jerusalem. Um, Hello, I Rex. found two working pay phones in this city, and uh, it's possible to make calls on them within the country. And also, apparently, you know, I guess if you can do that, you can do calling cards. However, when I look around on the Internet, I don't see any calling card company anymore that doesn't look like it's a website that's going to take my... Uh, take my, you know, credit card number and sell it to the Chinese government. Yeah. So I was wondering... Doesn't 7-Eleven sell those? Don't they have phone calling cards? You know, they have all those gift cards and stuff. Or maybe, you know, just a grocery store or something. They always have those giant racks of cards. If maybe you had some uh, some tips on how to make an international call from a payphone here, or if there's a calling card company that is still in existence. Uh, I don't know. All right, love you, honey baby, bye. I sure haven't used one in a long time. There's always a spoof card. You can find them at spoofcard.com. And here, let me look on their website. Oh, it's a little pricey. It's uh, $8 for 45 minutes of calling. That's not the best deal. But, you know, you're paying for the spoofing because you can change your number to anything you want. And there's other websites that are like SpoofCard. They probably have comparable prices. I don't know. That's all I can think of really is SpoofCard. But maybe check out gift cards at your grocery store. I could be completely wrong about that. I thought I saw a phone calling card, though, on one of those gift card racks. If any of you know of a good calling card thing to use from payphones in Jerusalem, you should post what you've used in the comments to help him out. Hey! It's Gordon Bombay. How's it going? Pretty good. You remember that uh, John Edwards, I think that's his name, guy, the guy that would talk to your dead relatives on TV? I was thinking when you call no. the uh, apartment complex people and you say you're sleeping on the couch, and they say, what's the name? Don't say Jerry. Say, ah, oh, what is it? Is it John, a jo- Joe, a Jay, or was, that a, was it an R name? Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, psychics do that same thing don't they they kind of coax it out of you i should learn to do that and i i bet you it'll work better than you think they'll probably jump in with oh you mean steve like, yeah that's it yeah that's the guy that's, yeah, that's what my i should great do idea so keep up the great work love you bye that is a great idea i should start doing that see how it works so many of those apartment people they just want to hand me information on the residents that live there i think that's enough voicemails for today there's still a ton of them in here but we'll get to him next time. Hey, I was just talking to Mr. Biggs on a messaging program, and he mentioned that something that he ordered has been delayed for eight weeks because of uh, the coronavirus in China. And since I have post office calls on the mind, that gave me the greatest idea ever. I'm going to call up people. I think I'm going to do a hobo sode tomorrow, and I'm going to call up people and tell them that their mail is going to be delayed because of the coronavirus, because, you know, the mail has to go to China first. So the Chinese can open up their mail and scan it, seal it back up, and mail it back to the United States. That's pretty much the best idea ever. Thank you, Mr. Biggs, for that idea that was totally yours. Hopefully I'll get that show done tomorrow. Maybe I'll just turn it into a snowplow show if it's funny enough. I'll just do 45 minutes of that. That could be a lot of fun. Thank you, Jim Dusky and AK Frost, Gobi, Christine, and Todd L. for being the sponsors of today's show. If you'd like to help support the show and help me pay that second half of my restitution off, only $10,000 to go, then you should support this show by going to patreon.com slash phonelosers or phonelosers.com slash support. Or if you're listening to this on YouTube, you can support me on YouTube, not on the Snowplow Show channel, but on youtube.com slash phonelosers of America. That's where you can get an extra hobo sode every single week. It's a pretty good deal. It only comes out to about $1.25 per hobo sode. What a bargain. By the way, you know those automatic redial shows that I do every once in a while? I did one of those, I think, two nights ago. It was for episode five of the Snowplow show. I listened to the entire thing again, did some commentary over it, and put it all together and everything. And I have not released it because episode five of the Snowplow show was super fucking boring. 
I don't know if I'm going to put it up or not. Maybe I'll do that tonight, too, because I'll feel less bad about it if a real show is being released at the same time. But really, why do I want to release a shitty show? I mean, seriously, it was super, super boring. Nothing really great happened in it. So I might just not release that one. Maybe instead I'll just put a link in the show notes to where you can download it yourself manually. If you really want to be bored out of your mind for an hour straight, go to the show notes at snowplowshow.com. Look for the link to that. Or if I do decide to put it up on the website, you'll be able to find that on phonelosers.com. I doubt I'll put it anywhere else. I'm not going to put it in the Patreon. That's not right. Charging you guys $5 a month to make you listen to that. Don't forget to listen to Devin tonight, really late at night, when I would normally be doing the Hang Up the Phone show. Sorry, Dave. It's all her fault. Also, listen to other great shows, like another prank call show. He doesn't do live shows. He just does podcasts. On Friday night, if you go to the Hijinks channel on Discord, there are live pranks on there. You can listen through Discord to Dragon Mirror and whoever else is on with him. Saturday nights is Dwight, the Saturday Dwight Live Show. Mondays, we've got Wasted Memory on his own Mixler. There's a lot of good prank call shows out there happening. You should listen to every single one of them. Today, there was a show with Dom and Carlito on it. They did a live show on the Prank Call Nation Mixler. I only got to catch maybe a third of it, I think. But that was kind of cool, Carlito and Dom doing stuff together. Oh, yeah, and Graveyard Goons, they go on right before Devin tonight. They only do a YouTube show. They do it on video. Search for the Graveyard Goons on YouTube. They'll be live tonight, probably while I'm doing my editing. I'm going to listen to them. I'm ending today's show with a song by MC Lars. This is called My Daughters Like to Drink. This is probably the only thing I enjoyed from that automatic redial show I did a couple days ago, is that I rediscovered this song by MC Lars that I'd completely forgotten about. I don't even have this on my hard drive anymore. This is a song about daughters who like to drink. My daughter Janet Bush enjoys going to bars. A lot of people say Arlon is the best in the neighborhood. 